an important distinction to make here. The components of, the vector, of a vector are not scalars. It may seem like they are, but they're not, and this will explain why. We could use a different coordinate system, one that's rotated relative to our first one. We call this one the prime system. We've got x prime and y prime instead of x and y. This same vector that we used before is now entirely in the x prime direction. We have no contribution in the y prime direction. Our theta is, of course, zero since it's along this x prime axis. And our components are ax prime is square root of 26 and ay prime is zero. That's a change from what we had before. So the vector components are changing in a particular way if we go to a new coordinate system. Scalars won't change. For example, if I told you I had a model of this arrow made out of aluminum and it was two kilograms in mass and cost me $31, <clears throat> even if I move to a different coordinate system, those numbers don't change. The two kilograms and the $31 are scalars, so it doesn't matter which coordinate system I'm in but the components do change. We're going to spend some time on vectors because so many physical quantities are vectors. We're going to have to figure out how to combine them, but there are some particular rules that we'll have to know to see how that's, that's done. The first thing we're going to learn is how do we add vectors. And one way to do it that is not a lot of fun is the geometric method. There we place the tip of one vector against the tail of another. We keep doing that until all the vectors are linked. And then the final vector, which is our vector sum, or is known as the resultant, will be formed by, going, by drawing a vector from the tail of the first to the tip of the last. So for example, let's say we want to add these two vectors below. These are two different directions someone might walk, and we want to find out where do they end up if they do one and then the other. So the first one here, the red one, is 3.6 meters at 56.31 degrees north of east. That's the way we ordinarily measure these vectors. Then we walk 5.1 meters at 11.31 degrees south of west. So one way to add these vectors is just to move this blue one, the, tip, the tail of it, up to the tip of the red one. Now we've got this. And our resultant is formed by starting at the beginning of the red and going to the end of the blue. That means the green vector is our resultant. We could then measure this with a ruler and a protractor, and we would find it has a length of 3.6 meters, and it points 33.7 degrees north of west. This is really not a useful way to add vectors. It, it's going to depend on how well you can draw and how well you can measure angles, and this one is just miserable to use in practice.